Hey guys, welcome to uh, Tuesday's Notes. And being that it is a TikTok Tuesday, I thought I'd start with something fun. Here you go. And you the guy who tried to hurt me with the word goodbye. Though it took some time to survive you, I'm better on the earth. <laughs> All right. Hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, I've got a few notes today. I guess we're going to get to them. Here we go. So today, uh, as we go to the second section of chapter nine, ooh, here we go, maybe. Our goal is to uh, look at two things. First of all, when you have an inequality, what happens when the answer is all real numbers or no solution? And the main thing we're going to look at today is writing an inequality to represent a real situation. So let's knock this first one out pretty quickly. Just like an equation, when you solve an inequality, if you are left with no variable because it canceled out, and you have a true statement, if you have a true statement that tells you that the solution is all real numbers, and if you have are left with a false statement, a false statement tells you there's no solutions. So I have a quick example like that here. This will be quick and easy. If we go to solve this inequality, this less than or equal to, first we would simplify the left side by combining our like terms, and we would get 9k minus 3. On the right side, we would simplify by combining our like terms and get 9k minus 3. And <clears throat> since there's a variable on both sides, we would go to eliminate one of them, but as we eliminate one of them, of course, you can see both of them get eliminated. And we are left with negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 3. Now, if this had just been negative 3 is less than negative 3, it would be false. But since it is less than or equal to, they are equal to each other. So this is a true statement, which means the answer is all real numbers to this inequality. All right, in addition to that, I have two uh, story problems that we're going to write an inequality to represent a real situation. Uh, I will read this fairly quickly about the United Nations. So at the end of this chapter, your team you team <laughs> will have the exciting responsibility of representing a country at a special meeting of the United Nations called the UN. The UN needs your help preparing for future large-scale disasters. Interesting topic right now, huh? You will need to help find a solution that not only works best for the country you represent, but that also accommodates the needs of each of the other countries. To prepare you for this task, the next several lessons will present daily problems to familiarize you with the important issues and concerns of other countries. And here is one example, I guess. There are a total of 193 member states of the United Nations as of 2014. The member states are divided into regional groups. Here comes the important part. The Asia group has one less member than the African group. True enough. The European groups are smaller. Eastern Europe has four less than half the African group. The Western group, which includes the United States, has six more than the Eastern Europe group. Mercy. The Latin group has 21 less than the African group. And then one country, uh, Kiribati, I guess, 
in the central Pacific Ocean is in no region at all. I'll just do that. How many countries are in each of the five groups? All right, so what they really want us to do here is they want us to define a variable, and then we can represent all the unknown amounts using comparisons to that variable. And since it looked like to me up here that most of these were compared to the African group, we are going to make x equal the number uh, of states slash countries in the African group. And then we can represent the others using that, I think. So the next one said, let's see, the Asian group has one less member than the African group. So x minus 1 would be the Asian group. All right? Because there's one less than the African group. And then it says Eastern Europe has four less than half of the African group. So half of the African group would be one-half times x, and four less than that would be how many are in the Eastern Europe. We'll call it East Europe. <laughs> how about that? Next up, I've got Western Europe has six more than Eastern Europe. So Eastern Europe has one-half x minus four, and if I add six to that, I get West Europe, which includes, okay, and then the Latin American group has 21 less than the African group. So Africa minus 21 equals the Latin America, Latin group, we'll call it. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. Let me move it up a little bit. So we have now represented everybody, or all of the groups that are in this, uh, the UN. And it told me at the beginning, back in the first sentence, that there's 193 states. So all of these added together, plus one, because there's one country that's not in any group, would need to equal the total number in uh, the UN, which is 193. So I'd probably set something up like x plus x minus 1 plus 1 half x minus 4 plus 1 half x minus 4 plus 6 plus x minus 21 plus 1 equals 193. And I could go ahead and solve that for x, although I don't think any of you need me to help you solve that for x. Just add your like terms together and solve it, right? So I think that's enough for that one. The, the new thing here is, can you read the problem, represent all of the unknown amounts, and use them to set up an equation? We're going to do one more of these and call it a day. Okay, so this one, example two, the nation of Cameroon plans to give flowering sata trees to other countries this year as a symbol of friendship. When asked how to decide which sata trees make good gifts, Cameroon's chief arborist explained, this is important, we plant sata trees when they are six centimeters tall and they grow nine centimeters every year. The trees only flower when they are taller than 150 centimeters. Well, it is very important that the trees Cameroon gives flower this year. It would be considered an insult to receive a tree that did not bloom. Luckily, Cameroon has many groves of sata trees from which to select its gifts. How old must the trees be so that they will flower this year? All right, well, they've told us up here, all right, when they flower. They flower when they're 150 centimeters tall. 
So when will they be 150 centimeters tall? Let's see. It wants me to write and solve a mathematical sentence to determine how old the trees can be so that they will flower. So any trees that are over 150 centimeters will flower. How can I set that up? Let's see. They are 6 centimeters tall when they are planted, and they grow 9 centimeters each year. All right, so I think if I make X the number of years growing, then I can set up an inequality for when or what trees will flower. Let's see, I think my inequality would be 6 plus 9 each year. So 6 centimeters plus 9 centimeters times the amount of years it's been needs to be greater than, so this would be their height at any given time, and they need to be taller than 150. So I need this to be greater than 150. And if I solve this for x, I can figure out how many years the trees have to be, how old they have to be, so that when I give them away, they will flower. I would subtract 6 from both sides. Oops. I can subtract. And I would divide both sides by 9. Well, 144 divided by 9, that is 90 and 54, that is 16. Trees need to be greater than 16 years old if they're going to flower. So, greater, greater than 16 years old. All right, but then we got this one more tidbit from the uh, arborist. <laughs> I almost forgot to tell you, when the trees become very old, they stop flowering. Make sure you choose trees that are no more than 240 centimeters tall. So they have put another inequality in here. We need the trees to be no more than 240. And another way of saying no more than is less than or equal. So I also need the height. We know what the height is. The height is 6 plus 9x. And we need that height to be less than or equal to 240. So I would solve this for x by subtracting 6 from both sides and getting 234. And then, of course, I would do 234 divided by 9. And I would get x is less than or equal to 26. All right. Last thing here, guys. Sorry about this. Since both parts A and B must be true, this would be considered an and compound inequality. And as we saw yesterday, the answer could be written two different ways. We could write it as the two inequalities, x is greater than 16 and x is less than or equal to 26. And that would be one of our solutions. So the trees need to be greater than 16 years old, but less than or equal to 26 years old. Or we can write an and inequality like this by putting the smaller number the x, the 26, and saying x is greater than 16. Again, see how we flipped it around because we flipped which side the x was on, but less than or equal to 26. This is an and inequality. An and inequality being between two numbers, right? All right, I'm sure you'll have no problem with the notes. Good luck.